Special thanks to the Patreon supporter Repentless Lamb for making this tutorial possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Skirtofu here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we go ahead and building the Rhine Metal Defense 130mm Gun Test Bed Challenger 2. It is a bit of a mouthful, but it, this here is an experimental tank that is operated and uh, designed by Rhine Metal Defense of um, Germany. Basically, the goal of this is to kind of um, fit the Challenger 2 with a 130mm gun to obviously show kind of proof of concept. Um, a lot of the new main battle tanks are moving to 130mm guns. It does allow a lot of more versatility and obviously more powerful rounds um, to kind of, I guess, keep up with the ever-growing advancements in armor and all that stuff, and I believe the newer KF-51 tank that's been introduced by Ryan Metal does support a 130mm gun, and um, also from a few things I read, the newer um, replacement for the Abrams for the United States is also going to have a 130mm gun, so um, it's kind of a new thing that we're going to start seeing instead of the 120mm smoothbore, and this here is just kind of a test um, vehicle of Ryan Metal to test the 130mm in the Challenger 2 chassis, which most likely would probably be an upgrade um, or a specific variant of the Challenger 2 that we may see um, the British adopt and start to field and all that stuff. Um, anyway, it's a really cool, interesting design and should be a fun one to build. Um, there are some, obviously, modifications to it. Um, the herd is a little bit wider than the typical Challenger 2, obviously, to probably house the um, larger gun, and I believe this also has an auto loader attached to it as well. So, uh, pretty interesting stuff, and kind of a whole redesign really of the turret and inside workings of the Challenger 2. Uh, but it's a cool vehicle, and again, this is only experimental. There is no um, like actual production model of this that's planned or going to really go anywhere. It's probably most likely just going to be a tank that is used as a test vehicle to further enhance the auto loading capabilities and the. Um, obviously the 130mm gun capability. So um, overall kind of interesting build and should be a pretty unique one kind of an experimental um, tank and all that. Now before we go and jump into this tutorial, I do want to go ahead and give special thanks to Patreon supporter Repentless Lamb for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel where you already do, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video description where you can go and play a small amount of the channel every month and doing so or a view core request to your choosing. It really helps support the work I do with my channel. It's really greatly appreciated, so definitely feel free to check that out. Again, link is always going to be in my video descriptions. So going ahead and jumping into this um, build here, we have a pretty interesting tank. It's a pretty simplistic build, obviously, with most modern tanks nowadays. They're really starting to go pretty simple in terms of design. Uh, but what's cool about this tank here is it has um, this really kind of interesting camouflage. Um, it's almost like hexagonal shapes or these uh, small little like segments, almost, um, that are kind of in this gray, this... Uh, dark gray pretty much black color and then the white color so it's kind of like a digital uh, urban type of camouflage and it's really cool I actually really do like it and I think it looks good on this tank um, definitely makes it stand out makes it something a little bit more unique uh, but as I mentioned we did have we do have the 130 millimeter gun here mounted on the front again it's not really too different from that of the 120 uh, besides that 10 mil difference we then have the um, front here, uh, housing here, this is completely different uh, compared to the other previous challengers, kind of more squared off um, and all that stuff, kind of almost like the earlier leopards, if that makes any kind of sense. Um, anyways though, as we move back, we have the top of the turret here, so the viewports, all that fun stuff, the um, commander's hatch. Uh, it's kind of hard to get some pictures at the top angle here, but I did assume they're probably like smoke grenade dispensers in these in this area here. So those may or may not be there. The kind of little uh, design freedom choice I decided to go ahead and implement with the candles there. We then have this uh, kind of optics uh, view box up on top here, obviously for the gunnery crew. The uh, road wheels of the vehicle, nothing too crazy. The sides uh, again, kind of fully plated in with the. Um, you know, very thin armor. You got the radio antenna here on the back, obviously the vents, all that fun stuff, the external fuel tanks, or the storage tanks there, and um, all that, and really that's pretty much the Challenger 2. Um, this is kind of a new design compared to the previous Challenger 2, um, I, in terms of its kind of hole, the hole for the Rhine Metal um, vehicle and this one are practically the same thing, um, besides maybe like a few different armor add-ons add and stuff like that, but uh, this uh, hole is pretty much the same, and I've kind of went ahead and modified it and kind of created a newer hole, which I think works a lot better for the Challenger 2. Uh, but this turret here is going to be completely new, um, so if you are wanting to kind of make a Challenger 2 out of this, uh, you may have to kind of, uh, you know, do your own there for the turret and kind of um, 
you know, figure that out. Anyways, though, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer, layer number one. All right, guys, so real quick before we go ahead and jump into this build, I do want to go ahead and mention that we will be talking about the camouflage a little bit at the end of the video. We will might not be going ahead and doing the camouflage block by block, but I will show you guys and kind of walk you through what I did to go ahead and build my model. So if you are going to build the camouflage, you're free to do that, or you can build it really whatever color you guys want. But this, again, is based off the specific Rhine Metal Defense variant that they have, and it does have this color scheme. Um... And there really is only one of these tanks, so that is what we're kind of going off since we're building this tank specifically. Um, anyways, though, with that kind of out of the way, um, let's go ahead and jump into it. So we will be going ahead and building this in a full, like, gray color scheme, and you're obviously free to change that as well, or as you will. Um, but um, again, we'll be building it just a plain gray and kind of having a clean palette. Anyways, let's get started here. We're going to place down two narrow brick slabs here and then two narrow brick top slabs going off of this toward the front. We'll then follow this with two black shulker boxes sideways like so. We're going to place down two polished black stone stairs and there are two right behind those that's going to create this first road wheel. We're going to go and repeat this same process with our stairs a total of four more times. So we have two, three, four, and lastly, five. So just like this. And then we're going to place down two narrow brick ups downstairs. After we have that done, we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three stone top slabs, and then going up to the front here, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of uh, three stone top slabs that's going to come off of these shulker boxes. So, one, two, three. We're going to go ahead and then take our stone top slabs, and we're just going to go ahead and fill in our rows of three, basically connecting them to each other and filling in this middle space here, bringing our build basically filled in front to back. Now, after that's done, we're going to go ahead and place down two narrow break ups downstairs here. We're going to go forward with two polished blocks downstairs, and there are two behind these. Then we're going to place down two more, a narrow two, one two, one two, one two, one two, and our last wheel, one two, one two, and then we're going to place down two black stroker boxes back to back like so. Again, two narrow brick slabs and two narrow brick top slabs to go ahead and bring us to our front of our vehicle here. Now on the stroker boxes here, these black ones, we're going to place down an item frame and then a gray stained glass paint in the item frame. If you're on Java, we can also go ahead and place down a stone button on the side of the stroker box. Just note the addition of buttons and item frames in the same block space is only going to be a Java feature. If you are not on Java, you will have to basically build just the item frame or just the button. I would prefer, preferably say to build the item frame rather than the button, but again, that is up to you guys. And same thing will be done over here on this side, item frame, gray uh, glass paint and a stone button like so. Now after you have that all done, that's pretty much uh, it for our main structure here. We do have um, the addition of these banners here that are going to go on the side of our polished black stone stairs to help kind of create our road wheels. These banners here are pretty simple in design. Uh, basically all we have here are two black banners. So we have two black banners that so we're going to start with. We're going to go take gray dye and we're going to go and split the banners in half, right on one side or left on the other side for the banners. And then we'll just take a black horizontal line and place it across the center of both banners and you have that design. It's really simple, pretty straightforward stuff. Once you have that done, you're going to go and place these banners on the side of the stairs. And you want to make sure that that gray is facing toward the middle of the two stairs kind of in that middle spot there where they would connect up or where they do connect up. And what this does is kind of helps create our wheels, kind of has the spacing between the wheels. It's overall kind of a nice design. It works really well for representing our, tra our uh, road wheels that are on the vehicle. And same thing obviously is going to be done over here on this side as well. And that is going to basically form up the, um, the tracks there. Anyways though, with that all complete, that is going to wrap up everything we have there for layer 1, and with that we'll go ahead and jump into layer number 2. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number 2. For layer 2 to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down two gray shulker boxes uh, sideways like this, and this will be on top of these two narrow brick slabs that will basically be present on both sides there. We're going to go ahead and place down two dark oak trap doors on both sides here, and the space in the middle here. We want to go ahead and then place down a skeleton skull on both sides, and we then want to go ahead and grab our stone blocks and we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five stone blocks across the center. And actually my bad, it's actually going to be one stone block on the side there and then it's going to be a row of five of stone across. In this middle space here we are going to go ahead and grab some light gray stained glass panes which will be going ahead and placing down a row of three across that middle space there like so. On the sides here we do want to go ahead and grab ourselves some pistons. If you are not on Java I would recommend stone slabs as an alternative to pistons. Uh, but for Java players, we will go ahead and place down a piston that's going to be upside down like so, and we're going to be going ahead and modifying this a little bit later. Um, and again, we'll talk about that a little bit further once we get to that point. And we're going to go ahead and just place down an air stone block going back on both sides. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of seven going all the way across the stone. Then another row of five. This will be done with the same thing here for piston 
on both ends that will be facing upside down. Just like that. We're going to go ahead and take our stone blocks. Again, place down a row of seven across. Then a second row of seven. Then we want to place down a row of five across. We're going to go ahead and follow this up with a piston. Again, upside down on both ends. Just like that. We're going to go ahead and take our stone blocks. We're going to place down another row of seven. Then a second row of seven. And then we're going to place down a row of five across the middle here, which will then place down a piston upside down. Same thing over here. Just like that. Then we're going to take our stone blocks. We're going to place down another row of seven all the way across here. Then a row of five across. And then on both ends, we're going to be going ahead and placing down a stone upside down stair that's going to sit like that. And after that stone upside down stair, we're going to go ahead and grab our gray shulker boxes. We're going to place down two gray shulker boxes, again, back to back, or bottom to bottom, I should say, um, on those narrow brick upside down stairs. And then coming off these, going ahead and going toward the back, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone upside down stair. So you're going to place down two upside down stairs here. And the same thing will be done over here on this side as well. Here are two stone upside down stairs. After that is all done, we want to go ahead and fill in the center space here with three stone full blocks. And we'll then take our light gray stainless panes and we're going to go ahead and place down another row of three of glass panes there across the center between those stone stairs. After that is all done there, we're going to place down an item frame on the side here of these shulker boxes, as well as we're going to go ahead and place down a cobweb in the item frames and a stone button on the side there, again, for Java players. Um, and again, if you are not Java, you can just place down the item frame and disregard the stone button. Um, with that all complete though, that is going to basically wrap up what we have there for layer number two for the build. Again, where the pistons are, I would recommend slabs if you are not on Java. Um, if you're on Java, obviously go ahead and proceed further with that. Anyways though, that is going to wrap up what we have for layer two. And um, actually one quick thing also, these front stroker boxes are going to have the item frame and cobweb and stone button again um, also on the front here. So do make sure that that gets added on if you haven't already. Anyways, though, with that all the way, that's going to wrap up everything for this layer. Let's move on to layer number three. Moving into our next layer, we'll be moving into layer number three. For layer three to start with, we're going to place down two daylight detectors on top of these shulker boxes. And then behind that, we're going to place down two stone slabs on both sides. We then want to place down one, two, three slabs and one, two, three. And we're going to go then place down a daylight detector here directly in the... Or sorry, actually, it's going to be a total of seven across here. And then in this space right here, we're going to go ahead and place our stone slabs to both sides and then a daylight detector here in the center, which will turn to that night mode. And again, we're also going to do the same thing with these with these daylight detectors, turn those to night mode, as well as an item frame on these two stone slabs and a snowball in those item frames. Um, we're going to go ahead and then swap out these three stone slabs for pistons. If you do not have access to um, a debug stick or you're not on Java, I'd recommend probably placing down stone stairs instead. Um, so you can do stone stairs like this, though pistons here again are going to be the best bet um, if you have access to them. Once uh, that is all done there, we're going to go ahead and then place down a um, polished blackstone stair here in the center. And then to the sides, we're going to place down a row of one, two, three stone blocks, one, two, three. Then we're going to take our stone blocks, we're going to place down a row of seven across, then a second row, then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and lastly, eleven going all the way across there to fill, us, fill in the uh, tank and bring us all the way back to this point here. Uh, once we have that all done, we're going to then place down an item frame here on these stone blocks. And we then want to go ahead and take our red bed and we're going to place it in the item frames with the white portion that's going to be facing toward the inside. And just like we did for the item frames there, if you are on Java, we can go ahead and place down a dark liquid sign on the side here. Um, or actually rather, since our build is all stone, uh, we will go ahead and use birch wood because birch wood signs blend a little bit better with the stone. Um, so we will place down birch wood signs here on both sides over the item frames, which again is going to be more of a Java only feature. We then want to place down two uh, gray shulker boxes, again bottom to bottom right here. These are going to be your external fuel tanks. To go ahead and complete these, we're going to place down item, or trap doors on the side here of these shulker boxes. And then we're also going to place them on top here. And then on the bottoms of these, we're going to go ahead and also place down levers like so. And we're going to go ahead and flip these to go forward like so and do make sure that your trap doors stay closed if they do open up on top and then in the very center here uh, we're going to place down a grindstone and then a flower pot on top of it to go ahead and complete that on the back there 
Um, with that all done, though, that is going to wrap up everything there is there for layer number three. And um, with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, which will be layer number four. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four to start with, we're going to place diamond stone block here on top of the stair, and then one more block out to both sides. Actually, sorry, two more blocks out to both sides. On this very outer block, we're going to place down an iron trap door, and we'll go ahead and then, for Java players, type in our command slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. So this command right here, pressing enter, will give us this glowing stick. What we can do is we can left click the iron trap doors till we get selected open false. Right clicking that will set it to true and it will lay flat against the side of those stone blocks. Uh, if you are not on Java and don't have access to a debug stick, you can very simply just go ahead and place down birchwood trap doors and get the same effect. Uh, going ahead and going off that center stone block, we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, four, five stone top slabs forward. On the last five, uh, we're going to go ahead and place down birchwood signs on the sides of these slabs like so. We're going to go ahead and take our stone slabs, we're going to go ahead and go forward one, two, three, and then a polished black stone slab there on the very tip to go ahead and complete the barrel there of your gun for the time being. Now with that done, we're going to go ahead and take our stone blocks, we're going to place down a narrow row of five across. This can be followed with a second row, then a third row, then we're going to go ahead and do four, and lastly five. So you have five rows of uh, five going across uh, after that row, so a total of six really if we count that first row we placed. Um, we then want to go ahead and grab our light gray stained glass panes, and we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six glass panes along the side here, and same thing over here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then on the back, we want to go ahead and very simply uh, take our stone top sides, we're going to place down a row of five across, then a second row of five. To the sides, we're going to place down an iron trap door, and then we're going to go ahead and go after the iron trap door with a daylight detector, which will go ahead and turn to night mode. We're going to go ahead and place down an arrow of five of daylight detectors across this space here. We'll turn these all to that night mode, so that nice kind of bluish gray color. And then a skeleton skull will go like this to both sides. You want the face facing toward the outside. Then in the middle here, we're going to take our polished uh, deep slate tiles, or just our rather our deep slate tiles, and we're going to go ahead and place down a row of five going across the center here. And then a second row of five with daylight detectors to the sides here with the them turned to night mode. Same thing over here, like so. Then we want to go ahead and place down one more daylight detector going back, so it's in that corner space there. And then lastly, we're going to take our stone brick slabs and just place down a row of five, filling in that space across there for the engine bay. With that all done there, that is going to wrap up everything we have for layer number four of the build. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into layer number five. Moving into our next layer, we'll be moving into layer five. For layer five to start with, we're going to go ahead and place down a flower pot on top of this polished blackstone top slab. We're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three buttons back two iron trap doors, and then one, two, three buttons back from that. We then want to place down an iron trap door here, and then after that iron trap door, we're going to place down a stone brick slab. Now to the sides here, we're going to place down one, two, one, two stone slabs like that out to the sides, and then we're going to place down flower pots here on top of those stone blocks there on either side. When we have that all finished, we want to go ahead and then grab ourselves a um, smoker. We're going to place down a smoker here on what will be the right side of the turret, so the side here. Polished black stone wall, and then we're going to go back to our pistons here, and we're going to place down one, two, three pistons. Again, an alternative here to the pistons will probably be to use stone stairs, but again, pistons here are going to be the best bet to use. Once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and then take our stone blocks, and we're just going to go ahead and place down a row of five going all the way across this space here. We'll then place down a second row of five after that, and then once we have that done, we're going to place down a stone block here on the left side, a stone brick full block, a stone, and then three stone blocks out to the right side. Again, another row of stone blocks across, a uh, second row of five, and then a third row of five going all the way across there to bring us to this point. Now, on the sides of the turret, we're going to go ahead and take our skeleton skulls, and we're going to place down one, two, three, four. And then over here, same thing, start on the piston, one, two, three, four. We'll then take our iron trap doors, one, two, three. And over here, same thing, one, two, three. Um, and we can go ahead and then grab ourselves a debug stick, and we can go ahead and basically use this, left click it. To select it open and we'll go ahead and just right click this and set it like that and we'll go ahead and go over here and do the same thing so like so and go ahead and continue on we're going to go ahead and place down a stone brick wall here to both sides we're going to go ahead and place down a birchwood sign on the sides of the stone brick walls and then we're going to place down one two three like gray stainless paints across the middle there we'll then place down an item frame on these stone brick walls as well as a iron bar in the item frames just like that to go ahead and rack up, wrap up the back of the turret that right there is going to complete everything we have for uh, layer number four, or actually sorry, my bad, layer number five. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our last final layers, which should be layers six through nine. Moving into our next layer, we have layers, or actually our final layers, six through nine. 
For these layers to start with, we're going to place down a daylight detector on top of this um, smoker. We're going to go and turn that to night mode and then an iron trapdoor behind it. We'll also place down an iron trapdoor on top of that polished blackstone stair. After we have that done, we're going to go then place down four black candles in this space here. And then we're going to do the same thing over here on the other side. Here are four black candles. We'll also place down a redstone repeater on front in the front here of the stone brick slab, or stone brick full block, which can have the rest of, or the notches spread apart. Next to the candles here, we're going to place down a skeleton skull, stone brick slab behind it, skeleton skulls around the slab like that. After we have that done, we're going to place down another stone block here in the center, and then like gray stingless paints around that one as well. On top of that, we're going to place down one more stone block that goes up, skeleton skull on both sides, iron trap door, and we're going to go then grab a debug stick here. And we will use the debug stick here to left click and set this trap door to open or flat like that on the block. We'll also place down an iron trap door here on top, an item frame. In that item frame, we're going to go ahead and place down a black bed, which will be vertical, and a birchwood sign like that. And that right there is going to be finished that off. And one of the last things we have to do here is going to be a end rod on top of the stone brick walls. And then one, two, three and four iron bars up like this for the radio antenna. And one more, like that. And after we have that all done, that's gonna pretty much finish off the build here if um, you are not planning to do camo. One thing I do wanna go ahead and mention is if you are on Java and you do have the pistons placed, we will take our debug stake here. We will we'll left click the piston until we get selected and extend it false. Uh, prompt pop up or right click and we can actually get rid of the wood portion um, Just note that if you do want to go ahead and build the camouflage on the vehicle I would recommend holding off on altering your pistons. So using the debug stick on the pistons um, Because that any block updates near the pistons will actually cause the pistons to revert back to basically what you see in front of you And it can move blocks and mess blocks up So just make sure that if you are going to go ahead and do the camouflage, you don't activate those or you don't change the pistons properties with the debug stick just yet. And I would save the pistons to be changed at the very end of the build. Anyways, though, that is it for the main vehicle and just a standard kind of gray color scheme. Let's go ahead and talk about it a little bit further in the camouflage that's on the actual version. So when it comes to building the camouflage for the vehicle, it's really straightforward and simple. Um, we're going to be going ahead and using kind of a combination. We already have our vehicle built totally in the stone color, so we don't have to worry about that too much. Uh, but for our white, we're going to be using um, iron trap doors for white areas. We'll be using the um, quartz slabs, quartz stairs, and white concrete. Um, and then for the black, we'll be using black concrete, polished black stone slab stairs, obviously black stained glass, dark oak with trap doors, and those types of areas. And you can see from my vehicle here, I really kind of tried to just kind of make it very sporadic. You don't want to have a lot of the same color in one area. You do want to go ahead and make sure it's kind of like a checkerboard type design, but not really. You, you do want to make it a little bit different. You don't want it to be just a complete checkerboard because um, that gets really boring and kind of plain. But you do want to have kind of that type of, um, I guess, vibe to it to where it does look a little bit like it and I'll kind of show some like uh, 360 views here of my tank so if you do want to go ahead and just kind of pause the video and just kind of see what I did um, but really all you can see is I'm just kind of randomly placing these blocks here um, not really any particular order but again trying to minimize the amount of blocks in the same block space so you can see I try not to put too many whites next to each other not too many blacks um, stone is kind of a different story. I think stone is kind of the color that appears a little bit more that lighter gray is a little bit more prominent on the tin compared to the white and black. But again, that's something you want to keep in mind is trying to avoid having too much of one color in one small spot. Um, so just a kind of like a variety of checker patterns. Um, the wheels are unaltered. They are still that dark, this dark gray color. So we are not going to touch those at all. Um, but again, you can see on the back here, same thing kind of applied to the rear of the vehicle, the turret obviously, um, even that area like underneath the turret, you want to make sure you get those blocks also swapped out. Um, but that's really about it for it. It's pretty straightforward, really simple, and obviously if you need to, you can go ahead and kind of pause the video and copy those um, designs there if you really want to. But that is going to conclude everything we have there for the Ryan Metal Defense 130mm Gun Test Bed Challenger 2. Hope you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you do end up using this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This will be linked from the side of the build, tweet to my channel, or this video if this does a pretty social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for the build, your freezer for projects you guys are working on, and all that fun stuff. Again, a big thanks to Patreon supporter Repentless Lamb for making this tutorial possible. As always, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 204, and I'll see you guys next time.